This video features high-end limited edition collectibles and is intended for adult collectors. Hi guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Sang. And Max. And today is our second day coverage of Integrity Con, Legendary Convention. So if you haven't checked out our coverage of day one of the Legendary Convention yet, make sure to check out the link in the video description below. We went over everything that went down in the first day of Integrity Toys' first virtual convention. But yeah, we're gonna jump straight into day two today. And yeah, it started off with the Style Lab reveal, um, which as I'm sure many of you already know, the Integrity Toys Convention Style Lab is kind of an opportunity for collectors to focus a little bit more on mixing and matching clothes to dolls because the dolls themselves are sold nude and then you have to purchase the clothing pieces separately. One kind of cool thing about the Style Lab this year is that unlike some previous years, they didn't require collectors to purchase a, like an article of clothing or a clothing pack with every nude doll. So I think it created a lot more of like a free for all for what people were buying and stuff like that. And like two years ago, um, we once again had the build a doll feature where if you collect all of the different limbs and pieces and components from the entire Style Lab collection, which means you have to buy the entire set of all eight, eight dolls. dolls. Yeah, and then the Build-A-Doll is the ninth doll. Um, then you can put together a Build-A-Doll. Yeah, so essentially every new doll and every fashion pack comes with a limb or a, a piece of clothing. It's all secretive, so you don't know which limb comes with what. So. I mean, the most... The blind most, box. Yeah, <laughs> well, kind of, yeah. Pretty much blind box, yeah. yeah. Um, if you buy them individually versus buying the whole set, because then you're guaranteed to be able to build the build a doll in full. But the Style Lab this year was entirely fashion royalty, and I think a lot of people were expecting some retro sculpts to make a comeback, um, especially just with the legendary theme, which, you know, in the webinars and presentations, they have made it very clear that legendary is very much about grails and you know recreating grails and bringing back kind of iconic sculpts and screenings and moments from integrity toys earlier years and we definitely did see a lot of that in this style lab and it was entirely designed by von sawyer he's been with integrity toys for a very long time um, and he designed the entire Style Lab, and he's, you know, the designer of Meteor and the Monarchs, so I think we've definitely seen that he has kind of a specific set of tastes and design styles, and I think we saw that in a lot of this year's Style Lab. So it's gonna be a little different since there's so many little pieces and dolls to go over. We'll just talk about the dolls we liked and didn't like. Overall, yeah. yeah. And yeah, we'll maybe show the full set on screen here um, and you guys can stay tuned for a haul that'll be a little more in detail of the full collection because Sang pre-ordered the full style lab. Yeah, so they yeah. do give you an option prior to the convention to purchase sight unseen everything from the style lab, which I did, which, you know, was a choice I made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, you just, you never know with the Style Lab. I will say though, the Style Lab this year did sell out. Yes. They sold out because the Style Lab, it was one of the only things at this particular convention where like the entire set, right, of the additions, the addition sizes for all of these dolls was lower than the total number of attendees, so. So the, everything was 400 each. Not everyone who has a ticket could buy them. I think the whole idea is you don't buy everything, you just buy what you like. But you know, there are some people who just buy everything. Given the theme and like the gimmick of this, you kind of have to buy everything. I mean, yes, yeah, because like we said, we're kind of giving a overview of the Style Lab because it's just, it's way too many dolls and this video would be hours long if we went into every one in detail. Okay, so Carol and you know Alain did this presentation and you can, like, we're not in the same room and we're not there with other attendees, but you can almost feel like like a gloom set in as they went along. Um, I mean, they tried, I, I think they tried the best to highlight like everything that these represent and all that and the history behind FR, but I think there's something wrong with the images they use. I think they weren't the best promo images they could have gone with. Even look at the first character, who is Veronique. 
her her little hair tie back is crooked. It's not even centered. So it's like, you know, it's like these kind of things, like this is the promo image you're using to try to sell this doll. It needs to be flawless. You should entice yeah. people to buy it. Yeah, the, the presentation of the Style Lab dolls um, felt off and I think they took a risk doing that to begin with because um, I, I think, you know, we'll have to see in the days and weeks to come and I, you know, I've gotten first impressions opinions from some people but I feel like this is going to end up being kind of a polarizing Style Lab because they did bring back some long missing characters and sculpts um, which again, you know, they didn't really rely on, uh, like none of, like none of, to my understanding, the really, really popular in modern times fashion royalty characters even made an appearance in this collection. Like there's no, there's no Agnes, there's no Elise, there wasn't a Eugenia, there wasn't like, it, it was a lot of like older characters. I think and the only, the only character sculpt that stuck around was um, is Vanessa. Vanessa 1.0. Yeah. And everything else is like Veronique is 1.0. She's re pretty much retired until recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, Adele, this is Adele 1.0 and she is, you know, there's a reason <laughs> there's been three versions of Adele and yeah. Yeah, I mean Adele is a, is a really popular character but like Girl started at all, but... I know. mean, using the Adele 1.0 sculpt, which I mean... You know what? As we've said, sculpt does not mean everything. Like, there's plenty you can do with screenings, even on, like, rougher sculpts, but... This Adele was just... It's, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a no. It's yeah. a no for me. <laughs> like, I... Not a fan of the, the Adele. I think the thing too, and Sang and I talk about this a lot with like the older Integrity Toys sculpts and you, you know, you see it more the further back you go into their history, um, is just, there's, there's less and less realism. So they give off these very cartoony vibes because so many of the features are just really disproportionate or like oversized, elongated, you know, or some of that. So I think th that's just a recurring theme of that in this style lab. I will say um, Isha Narayanan making a return appearance, which we did review Sacred Lotus Isha it was a very long time ago. Um, and I saw a lot of folks online and, you know, on Instagram and in our videos saying that, you know, Isha, Isha is an Indian character, so it's like it would have really been nice to have seen her in a darker skin tone. And we did receive a darker skin tone Isha in um, the Style Lab, and it seemed like the reception to her was pretty warm. I saw a lot of people who were really digging um, the Isha. I think she's probably one of the most popular oh, ones. Oh, for sure. Mademoiselle Jolie is also the Isha sculpt. Yeah, but that's the thing too, is this Style Lab was largely white skin tones like it wasn't really a spectrum we have sun kiss yeah and we have i mean there is but... there's slight like variations and i mean it's not like completely white this but i think the problem for me personally was given what we saw yesterday with the convention collection and all that it was like modern sculpts and modern fashion sensibility with it as a twist to a whole like an older history or grail. These are straight up just old dolls. Yeah, that, that's the thing is that it doesn't feel like a modern twist on. Yeah, it's like exactly. It was. It, it didn't seem like it was honoring it, but more of like recreating it or not even recreating yeah, it. Yeah, just no, bringing just, it back. Here, yeah, yeah. reprint. Here, <laughs> yeah, it's literally it's just like a reprint. Like even they even said mm -hmm. like this Veronique was something was a prototype of a Veronique that appeared strictly on a like a fashion doll like magazine and she was never created. And it's kind of nice that she she makes she finally makes her appearance that you can now actually buy. Again, like a lot of these like I don't think a modern FR collector would collect. So I think people who've been with the company for a long time um, would really appreciate the Star Lab, but I think people who are newer like us like just going to this convention, it seems like these aren't really our tastes. And it sucks because like a lot of fans did miss out on getting into this convention, so. Yeah, very true. Um, my personal favorite was Kyori. Um, it was uh, it was nice seeing her again because we haven't seen her since, since Lux Life. Was that like her last release? Yeah, and this is 
Kiri yeah. 1.0. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think she's very cute, and her the the clothing she's paired with, which we'll get to in a second, is adorable. Um, and of course, you know we have to talk about the build a doll. Um, the build a doll was Vanessa Perrin, um, which I think was surprising yet not, um, because I think Vanessa it's one of the the most you know notable popular fr characters but as you know if you watched our last video saying was kind of theorizing possibility for uh the agnes we keep seeing on all the promotional imagery which mind you there aren't too many opportunities left for that like marketing agnes to make her appearance um i personally am relieved she wasn't the build-a-doll because the build-a-doll just would have been so difficult to obtain. Um, it makes sense. I think by the time they got to the sixth or seventh doll, I'm like, there's no way. It could, it has to be Vanessa as the build a doll because she's the most enduring, like enduring sculpt because like this is Vanessa 1.0 and she's still popular to this day. I mean, they tried Vanessa 2.0, 3.0, fans were not having it. They still love Vanessa 1.0, so. It makes sense that it was her. This Vanessa is cute. I think the most striking thing to me about her is are her lips. She has very, it almost look like pearlescent, mm -hmm. like plum, light plum lips. Um, so it's a very cute Vanessa. I, you know, I'm gonna say the same thing about her that I said about the Build-A-Doll Poppy. I think, I don't know though, I wanna be, it's like I wanna be careful saying it because I feel like having to make that much of a purchase, like having to commit to all of the dolls, it's like you expect kind of a va va voom but I guess, I don't know, maybe it's better to just make it more of a compelling popular character bonus versus like the best doll at the convention. Because mm -hmm. I think the problem with that is I just think a lot of people would end up upset. So I think in a way, I think they made the right decision. Jumping into the clothes um, from the Style Lab, I would say that that for me was a bit of a mixed bag as well. It's hard for me to see a cohesive theme in these outfits. Um, but my personal favorite was the brighter bloom fashion, which happens to also pair with the doll I liked most. It's really pastel and youthful. Yeah, people are commenting um, that it looks like like a poppy or like a Misaki younger- or something. Yeah, like a youth, like, more yeah. youthful like mm -hmm. look than something an FR doll would wear. Um, I actually do like the fashion. It's diverse. Yeah, it, yeah, it is a diverse set of fashions. Um, I do uh, like quite a bit the fashion that comes or is suggested with actually, it's the same with the build a doll heart is her it's build of fashion as yes. well. Yeah, yeah. So so you have to collect the fashion pieces for Vanessa the same as you have to collect the, the parts for the doll. Um, I like her ensemble. I think her outfit is very, very cute. Um, I like kind of the mesh and puffy fabric on her and you know touches of purple um so i think she's super cute yeah. uh, i really i want a closer look at those heels because in the promo images you can like barely see that there's like these little crystal amethyst looking like i, I almost thought i was like is that like a spider or something or yeah, the heels? it looks like a spider you know i don't hate the style lab but i can understand the frustration of being a modern FR collector and seeing just strictly reprints of older dolls. Like, I, I, I guess it's just the modern FR has changed so much from just even just strictly talking about like the sculpts. Like they like these. There's a reason why these sculpts don't aren't here anymore. They just don't match with the current lineup. And you know, Jesse and some other designers have modified some of the original sculpts to fit in with the new lineup like Ver uh, Veronique 1.0 made a recent appearance in the new FR line and I think she looks great. I just both Fawn's style lab like both the, the screening and the sculpt is so retro. It's like more cartoony than what we are accustomed to now. Yeah and maybe that was the intent for the legendary convention. Because I was hoping current sculpts but using the same color palette or styling as like the original ones like what Jesse has done with Aaron because the original um, control clash I think you might I might have to fix it but the original Aaron was very retro and she used the old Aaron sculpt and then you know Jesse took his own twist on it with the new sculpt 
I was expecting that. I don't. I wasn't expecting just straight up Lolt skulls. Well, you know, if you guys have any specific thoughts on the Style Lab reveals, definitely sound off and let us know in the comments. Uh, and once again, you know, check back with us once we receive the dolls for a haul and a little bit of a you know, more in-depth look at each one. After that, um, the second event of the day was the Poppy Parker Gala. Once again, we got to see, you know, some words and some uh, kind of like an, an interview with David Buttrey, the designer of Poppy Parker. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like this is not the first year <laughs> where we've seen we've been given an in-depth breakdown of like inspiration behind Poppy and how he started designing with Misaki and how they show that same image of Twiggy and like talk about like, so it's, they, they cover that I think in multiple Poppy events at the convention. So in future I mean, years- I mean, I granted, you know, not the same people come every year. So I, that is true. But it is someone who has, you know, seen his other presentation and we know what he's talking about. It just kind of, it's just kind of zoning out for a bit. Yeah, I, he did. He did give more insight this time, so that's nice. Yes, it's like a history lesson of stuff that you already heard. So I think by now everybody already knows that you know Poppy Parker uh, was inspired by fashion models in you know the '60s primarily. Um, and he, he always talks about specifically that that book that he he received like a book from I think A Zone. It, or Azen? Yeah, he, he mentions that book a lot. Like he's mentioned it at previous cons and that that was like a huge source of his, his inspiration. And the two key things that we learned in this presentation that were important to note on were for one that I personally found fascinating, they shared some other potential names that Poppy Parker could have had. I think the interesting thing is learning that this is a project David and Jason had with each other and that I guess Jason was the one that made the final decision on the name, because uh, David gave him a list of names to use. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny too because he, you know, it makes sense because Poppy Parker obviously, you know, has the PP initials. Yeah, and he that was once again inspired by a lot of models, you know, at, during that era. A lot of whom had stage names or whatever had the same letter initials, and so a couple possibilities, you know, like Poppy could have been named. Sherry Clark, Sharon Shelby, Tabitha Tilly, uh, Trixie Tater? Trixie Taylor. Mm -hmm. Trixie Taylor, uh, which some of these names are very cute. I, I wrote them down because it's like, yeah, I wanted to mention that. Um, but something that was very interesting as well is he blacked one of them out and he said, I'm not showing this one because I might be using that for a future release. Like, ooh, are we gonna be getting another new character in the Poppy Parker universe? Yeah, that was a cute bit of information to receive. And also they of course discussed what's next for Poppy, which it seems to be a Palm Springs inspired line. And he actually said that every release next Club year basically is gonna be like some part of the Palm Springs line, which, you know, as we've seen this past club year, the upgrade doll um, Poppy tied in to the Model Traveler collection. Um, so we'll probably get a little bit of a taste of what's to come in this Palm Springs line. You know. Yeah, he said everything next year will be Palm Springs themed, minus the, the convention dolls. So it really depends on what he comes out with and if the theme really fits. I do like kind of the Mad Men styling, so I'm kind of excited to see that. Poppy had an amazing year this year. She, David, was on a roll. So I'm curious what he comes out with next year. Yeah, I'm gonna be interested to see it. I mean, it's kind of hard to go completely wrong with Poppy with us, but um, I had a little bit of a lukewarm reception to hearing that theme um, because I'm just expecting very like, beachy Oceanside releases and I just I for one I'm just I'm not a humongous fan of like swimsuit beach dolls especially as I've said before on this channel like at an IT price point um and we already already recently got like a swimsuit poppy so I'm kind of like eh, like you know I don't know but we'll see we'll see where they go with that um this was an incredible year for poppy so getting straight into of course the poppy centerpiece and giveaway dolls can I want I want to say something and it's controversial but I, I get that these presentations are not live and they're pre-recorded, there is something wrong with the website. Like the time starts at this time, but for the last few events, 
everyone who entered had a different time during the video that's being played. Like I went on just when it's supposed to be and I was able to watch it the way they wanted me to. But I go on to Instagram on eBay and they some people are already posting pictures. They are posting pictures of like the centerpiece and the giveaway before it even officially unveiled. So it's they need to fix this if they're gonna do another virtual convention or something, because like it ruins a surprise and then there's people asking about them already on the forum when like like no one knows what it is. So it's it was definitely an imperfect system and yeah we might get deeper into our final thoughts on the virtual convention experience in our final video um, tomorrow. It's there's some issues with it. I mean I totally expected there to be some technical difficulties given the situation. That particular issue is is not a great one. But the centerpiece poppy was commanding attention and she is a recreation of center of attention which was a very limited poppy back in the day uh, i think she was a, a jason Wu event exclusive of like 85 so like no one literally no one really had her so this is uh, a recreation of that i think she is very cute it's really funny i i kind of did a cross comparison of her and center of attention um and i don't i feel like it's the same color scheme <laughs> it doesn't feel like a recreation of that poppy mm -hmm. in terms of screening and hairstyle and stuff like that it, it's just they use the same like color palette like it's the the powder pink and the light orange i mean i was talking to a couple of members prior to this event and we we're talking about like oh what we're expecting a lot of people were expecting center of attention and i was like yeah they haven't had um, a blonde in this convention yet i was excited when she you know, turn out to be blonde, but I just don't like her hairstyle. I think, again, it's just, there's some, a recurring theme of like really big hair, like like upward hair. We just had this styling on like the blonde hair with the green eyes and like the pinkish lips several times in the last couple years. So it's it, like, she, she doesn't do anything for me. I think her outfit is adorable. I could totally see myself putting this little pink gown on other poppies, you know, other dolls. The poppy herself, I I do appreciate the color palette and it, it, her lips is almost like an orange lipstick, which we, yeah, we don't really hardly ever see on these dolls. And her accessories are cute, but you know, they're all color variations of pieces we've seen before. I think yeah. um, these, the floral, the bracelets um, and the bangles are, yeah. The earrings, all, I don't know. The earrings, I don't, I can't really. I think the earrings are reprints too. Probably. I mean, I'm usually really good at this, but yeah. it's like, I know for sure I've seen that bracelet Those are, before. yeah, and that, that thing they use um, so they, many times. That, the ring they've used a thousand yeah. times, yeah. Um, the bag is cute. The bag is cute. I like the little, like the embroidery and the beads and stuff. So there's some very, very cute little accents on her. We wouldn't call her a replacement per se of center of attention, but she has a very similar color palette. And I think if you're a fan of pink and, you know, girly gowns, you might be a fan of that one. So of course up next was the giveaway Poppy Parker, which was lovely in lilac. So she is a recreation of Lilac Frost Poppy Parker. You know, I was actually looking at Lilac Frost uh, on eBay a few times and um, she's very pretty, so this is a very nice replacement of her. Yeah, I think this Poppy is really beautiful. I have sort of a similar issue with her that I have with the day one Naja, who turned out to be, again, very beautiful and very popular, but I think this poppy is just kind of echoing very, 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 very samey things that we've already gotten from recent poppies. Sang and I were talking about how, uh, in many ways, this almost looks like a palette swap of sorts of um, Hello New York. Mm -hmm. Poppy from the Model Traveler co collection. You know, the hairstyle is like the same pretty much. And green eyes, girl, Poppy had green eyes a lot <laughs> in the past like year. Yeah, I was, Max mentioned that and I was like, well, you know, like how many color eyes can you get without getting too like, you know, like a fantasy? There's like 20 poppies a year. You've got it bound to have green eyes again eventually. Yeah. But it's, it's, a, it's a very common eye color for her, yes. Yeah, I, the outfit felt very similar to some poppy outfits we've seen before as well. Um, to me, the 
the bow on top and puff sleeves uh, once again kind of echo Hello New York, but they also were giving me some similar vibes to Split Decision. So this poppy is adorable, I, I will say. The pockets, the little like booty shorts and the hands in her pockets, so cute. That is adorable. David said like the fabric on like the vest part and the shorts are the same fabric that was used on the uh, brocade from he said it was like ten years old from like ten years ago. Or yeah, from uh, from from the original yeah. inspiration from uh, mm -hmm. Lilac Frost. So it's kind of cool. I mean, that part is like an interesting detail that it's really nice. Yeah, I think she's adorable. There is a part of me, y'all can let me know if you disagree with my fashion sense, but I there's a part of me that wishes she weren't 100% lavender. Like I love lavender, it's completely gorgeous, but I would have liked a little, you know, splash of something else in the outfit, especially because there's layers, like there's a vest and there's a, a bow and then these shorts and so I don't know, I would have liked a little speck of another color, but she's super cute and I anticipate her being very popular. But that concluded day two of the legendary convention. So yeah, make sure you guys join the conversation. Let us know what you think of these reveals and stay tuned because we will also be doing a video covering the final third day of the legendary convention. This whole process turned out to be a lot more work than we were anticipating. So even though we're bringing you guys daily videos, um, we don't know exactly sure how they're gonna be spaced out. Um, so just bear with us, stay tuned to our Instagrams at Hexalence and Tuklossum, and we will get the content to you guys as quickly and cohesively as we can. But yeah, check out the video description below for a link to our other Integrity Toys videos. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't, and we'll see you next time. Bye.